Dobro večer, poštovani gledalci. Dobrodošli u američki State Department. Ovo je soba u kojoj se održavaju redovne pres konferencije. Soba koja je u najkraćem srce američke javne diplomacije. Upravo sa ovog mjesta svakim radnim danom počinje čudna igra. Razmjena riječi i šareta, obećanja, prijetnji, nerijetko manje rečenog, više naslučenog između glasnogovornika State Departmenta i novinara. U pravilu više od sat vremena glasnogovornik, a već dvije godine to je Nicholas Burns, izložen je seriji pitanja od krize u Burmi, ljudskih prava u Kini, situacije u Istimoru, ratu, mafije u Kolumbiji, tursko-kiparskim odnosima, Beogradskoj šaradi ili, što je nama najzanimljivije, stanje u Bosni i provedbi Dejtonskog sporazuma. Pojavljivanju na ovom mjestu u jedan sat po ovdašnjem vremenu prethode sati priprema u kojima učestvuju stotine službenika, savjetnika i eksperata do visokih zvaničnika. U vrijeme kada sam dogovarala ovaj intervju od glasnogovornika State Departmenta dobila sam pismo u kojem kaže When I first stepped up to the podium to answer a barrage of questions launched from the State Department press corps in 1995, I thought I understood the press and knew what to expect. How wrong I was, napisao je Nicholas Burns. Šta je očekivalo, a šta ga je dočekalo? Kako uopće izgleda dan u životu glasogovornika, barem onaj dio koji se može znati? u specijalnom briefingu samo za gledalce televizije Bosne i Hercegovine iz američkog State Departmenta Emmeru Selimović. Good morning, Ms. Boxman's office. Mr. Burns is not available at the moment. Um, he's in a meeting. He's expected back shortly. Can I help you with anything? Okay. Would you like to leave a message? Okay. Fine. Thank you. Bye bye. He's coming. Oh. Hello, Nice to see you. How are you? I'm very well. We were waiting for you. I'm very sorry. I was with the deputy secretary. Please come on in. Okay. Is this office a uh, center of daily storm or just your sanctuary? <laughs> it's both. It's uh, it's a place where I can uh, close the door and uh, and read, but it's also the place where I have to direct the operations of a hundred people here. I have a hundred people who work in our Bureau of Public Affairs, and our mission is to communicate the message. Uh, to make sure that the world understands what American foreign policy is. I do that in briefings, but I also do it on that phone. I call a lot of reporters on that phone. How long have you been doing this job, and where did you come from? Well, I've been uh, the spokesman for the State Department for two years, and before that I was a uh, Russian affairs advisor to President Clinton and then to President Bush. I, I worked at the White House for five years, and then before that I was a diplomat in the Middle East, in Israel and Egypt. So the question was, day by day, how tough is it to prepare for the briefing? Well, it's a tough job because uh, in our system, I stand up in front of the press every day at the State Department podium in front of a lot of journalists, and they can ask whatever they want. And they, the briefing can go on as long as they want it to go on. So I have to know a lot about a lot of different things, not just Bosnia, although I know a lot about Bosnia, and we care deeply about Bosnia, but about China, about Brazil, about India, about our nuclear weapons policies. So I get in early, I get in at around seven in the morning and I have a conference call with all of my assistants and we talk about what we think is going to be in the public view that day and we try to prepare for it. I've just seen Secretary Mad Madeleine Albright this morning. I had a meeting with her at 8.30. I had a meeting with Strobe Talbot, our Deputy Secretary at 9.15. I'm going to go back and see Secretary Albright at noon. I'll be on the phone with the White House spokesman, Mike McCurry, the Pentagon spokesman, the CIA spokesman. CIA. I'll do a CIA, right. I'll do a lot of reading. I get re, uh, press reports that come in from all over the world that I read. And I also attend all of uh, Secretary Albright's meetings. So that's the way I prepare for the briefing, by listening. 
Obviously, uh, Nick, you learn a lot. Meanwhile, you said when you started in 1995 that you didn't know the, the difference between background and deep background. <laughs> what did you learn since then? I've learned a lot. I, I've learned a, uh, my own career, a diplomatic career, have been focused on the Middle East and Russia. And so I've learned a lot about a lot of different issues, particularly about Asia and Latin America, which are very important for the United States because we have huge trade relationship with our with our Latin American neighbors. We also have big, big economic relationships with China and Japan and Korea. So I've had to learn a lot about areas of the world that I've never uh, worked in professionally. I've also learned a lot about the press, which has been did mostly you, good. Did you ever feel that media knows more about a given subject that you, than you do? Well, that's one of the challenges of someone like me when you get up and you stand and you, and you give a press conference. Some of the reporters uh, are experts in the areas they cover. For instance, you, Vera, know a lot more about uh, Bosnia uh, and the situation in the Balkans than I do. Uh, we have other correspondents who've lived in Russia, who've lived in the Middle East, who've made it their lifelong occupation to become an expert in the subject, and, and so I need to keep up with them, and uh, so I study a lot. It's very important to be well prepared for these briefings. It's difficult to, uh, uh, to please journalists, like why reports, TV journalism, um, uh, big uh, magazines like New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times. So uh, how could you explain to us the difference between those reporters? Yeah, we have lots of different people who cover us. We have major newspapers uh, in, in New York and Washington that uh, are very important to us because millions of Americans read them. Uh, and they publish every day. We have the Wires, Associated Press, Reuters, Agence France Press, which publish four or five times a day. So you have to talk to them differently than you do the newspapers. And then we have the television networks. And in our country, uh, foreign policy is not as considered by most people to be as important as what happens here at home. So the, our networks, our big television networks, do not give a lot of attention to foreign policy. And we try to convince them to cover us, but it's very difficult uh, to do that. So I have to treat the reporters somewhat differently based on these different needs. I know you're in a hurry, one more here. You are responsible for explaining public diplomacy. How tough is to explain something that went wrong in a situation beyond your control? It can be very tough. I mean, we, are, we in, in general, have a fairly successful foreign policy, but not perfect by any means. I'll tell you the toughest issue I've ever had to deal with, Bosnia. Back in 1995, when I first took this job, uh, I remember July 10, 11, and 12 of 1995 when Srebrenica and Jeppa were overrun uh, by the Bosnian Serbs when the United Nations just stood by and we had hundreds of thousands of people affected by that, either killed or wounded or made homeless. And to stand up there and to talk about that knowing that the West had not done what it should have done was a very difficult thing. I can tell you I felt better talking about Bosnia a couple of months later when the United States began to use NATO air power to bomb the Bosnian Serbs and then of course when we went to Dayton, Ohio for the peace negotiations it was an easier job but but sometimes you know I, my job is to defend American foreign policy and I do that but when we make mistakes uh, it sometimes is very difficult uh, to explain what happened and to explain how we can overcome those mistakes uh, to the public. I have more questions pre precisely about Bosnia, and we can talk about that later, but let me ask just one. Do you feel that Bosnian story is close to your heart, or just another area of concern, or wish that it would just go away? We certainly don't wish it would go away, because we, we want to stay involved in Bosnia to help the people there overcome the war and to rebuild their lives and rebuild their economies. And we're going to, we're going to be there. Our troops are going to be there. And we'll be with them politically. It's, it's a very special issue uh, because it was one of the greatest moral challenges, I believe, to those of us in North America and Western Europe since the Second World War. I cannot say that in the early years of the war, we met that challenge. But I think that as of 1995, we did. And uh, therefore, it's always going to be a particularly important issue for us here in the United States. And by no means are we going to forget it. And I don't think you journalists are going to allow us to forget it. For sure. And uh, what kind of meetings meeting you have? I now? meet every morning with my own staff at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we go over uh, what we need to do that day uh, to make us successful. 
And so I'm going to go next door, and uh, you'd be glad to come in if you'd like and, and, Thank you and so watch much. us. Okay? I'd be glad to see you. Good. Sorry to keep you waiting. Prva postava dolazi u rano jutro u četiri sata. Pregledaju se svi vodeći listovi, pripremaju isečci i napisi o svim važnim temama u svim vodećim američkim novinama. Pripremljene tekstove zatim analiziraju službenici u press centru. Već u sedam sati ujutro, šest sati prije press konferencije, sa velikom vjerovatnoćom se tipuje na najmanje 20 do 30 pitanja koja bi novinari mogli potegnuti taj dan. U međuvremenu, eksperti za određene oblasti ili ambasade u pojedinim zemljama na koje se odnose određeni problemi pripremaju takozvane guidance. U najkraćem formuliraju službeni stav. Zapravo, guidance su nezamjenjive jer u osnovi nude verzije odgovora na pitanja za koja se pretpostavlja da bi mogla biti postavljana taj dan. Nekada glasogovornik saopšti određeni stav bez da novinari pitaju, nekada novinari ostaju bez odgovora. My name is Allison Shorter. I'm the special assistant to the spokesman of the State Department, Nicholas Burns. I just have a minute for you today. We're rushing to a meeting. My day begins quite early in the morning. I am with Nick all day long until late at night. Sometimes we're here till 7.30, sometimes 10 o'clock. This has happened before, I'm afraid. So what is your expectation? What uh, are you going to learn here? I'm having a wonderful time in this position. Working with Nick has been an excellent learning opportunity. It's exciting. It's vibrant. I have found out a great deal about the building, how the State Department works. It's definitely a bird's eye view of the functions of the building and what the different positions are and who plays what role in formula formulation of foreign policy in the United States. Alison, your day is 24 hours. So what is that? What is pleasure? It's not quite 24 hours, but my job is pleasure for me. I enjoy it very much. It's exciting. The people I work with are kind and generous and very dedicated, which makes it more enjoyable for me. Everyone is loyal and enjoys their, their position. Your telephone is ringing all the time. What is your job, basically? My job is to support Nick Burns. Uh, from early in the morning, I start reading the newspapers, watching the news, making sure he's aware of what's happening, breaking news. We go into meetings together. I help him prepare for the briefing. I make sure he's at all of his interviews. I coordinate with journalists to make sure that he's at those interviews and that everyone is seeing him when they want to see him. I'm his liaison with the different bureaus to make sure he's aware of what's happening, what the policy position is. I work with him on special projects. I work with him on the Secretary's trips overseas. Nalazimo se u press ofisu. Ovdje se užurbano radi još od jutarnjih sati. Ono što je zanimljivo za vas, pretpostavljam, jeste da opravo ovdje u ovom press ofisu se pripremaju isječci agencijskih vijesti. Dakle, sve što se objavljuje gotovo svakih 15 minuta ovdje možete naći Associated Press najčešće ili Reuters ili United Press International. Ono što je isto tako zanimljivo, svaki dan novinari ovdje mogu naći news clips. To su isječci svih vodećih američkih dnevnika, dakle sve zanimljivije teme, pogotovo one koje obrađuju vanjsku politiku Sjedinih država. Ovdje se također mogu naći svi važni papiri koji izlaze odavde iz press ofisa, a najčešće se odnose na zanimljiva pitanja, recimo izjava spokesmena o We understood this izjava spokesmena oko Irana, zatim situacija u Ekvadoru. Čečenija. Između ostalog, ovdje imate najčešće i ono što se odnosi na Bosnu i Hercegovinu, a novinari mogu doći svako popodne i upravo ovdje naći ono što se u ofisu priprema. Poslije svakog briefinga se može naći skripta, zapravo transkript, toga šta je rečeno u jedan sat na redovnoj preskonferenciji.
At this present time, I'm monitoring the wire service here at the State Department Press Office to uh, inform or to let the um, spokesman know of any news breaking information or stories that come up over the wire source. It's AP, UPI, FIBIS, and um, just an array of other um, media sources. How, uh, how often are you quoting stories? Um, I make a package at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 1, 1 p.m., and 3 and 5 p.m. Okay. Press office. Uh, sure, you can talk to me. Uh, when are you playing on? When, uh, today or tomorrow? Um, is this for Nicholas Burns? Tomorrow afternoon. Let me check with his schedule. Hold on one second. I have it in the email. Okay. Schedule. Well, today, are you planning on it today or tomorrow? Tomorrow afternoon. Well, right now, it looks like he might have availability at 4 o'clock. Does that sound good to you? How long would it be for about? Okay. How long would it be for? About 10 minutes? Okay. So I'll put you down to uh, for 4 o'clock to 4.10. All right? Bye-bye. What is your job? What are you doing here? What is their job and obligations during okay. the day? We're part of the press office, and the press office, as you know, prepares the spokesman every day for the briefing and responds to requests for both interviews and background information. What we do over here is respond to requests for interviews, and we go out and proactively seek interviews, both on radio and on TV. Um, foreign and domestic press to help explain American foreign policy to the American public and the world. I have uh, four questions for you. Yes. One of those is when you are going into the briefing, what is running through your mind? Well, now I'm about, at this point, I'm about an hour and a half ahead of the briefing. So I'm trying to follow what's happening in the world. We have wire reports coming in uh, from events all over the world. And I'm trying to keep track of them to make sure that we know what's going on. And if there are any issues that we're not prepared for, I get on the phone, I make phone calls to our experts, our negotiators, and I discuss with them what's the best thing for us to say to them. The first time you gave a briefing, how did you feel? Uh, a little nervous, the first time. Uh, I think you, you can expect that because you're, on, you're in front of the whole world representing your country, the United States. You know, when we stand up there, we're speaking for the United States, and so you, you have to be right, and uh, you have to make sure that you're well informed. So the first couple of times, uh, were a little daunting, but then it becomes uh, customary, usual. It's not a problem. Do you think about your briefings while you are off duty? I try not to, but it, but you know, reporters call me at all hours of the night. I get phone calls all throughout the weekend, late at night, 11, 12, so the reporters don't let me forget it. Does that mean Nick Burns 24 hours a day, Almost seven days a week? In this job, yeah, my wife complains that it is seven days a week. So we're going to have to go. Okay, so 1.5. situation changed at all? No. Did, did, the, did the Ugandans issue this statement that there are no Ugandan forces? They made a statement. And from here? Uh, I'm not sure where the statement was made from. I think Stephanie did uh, make the statement, but the problem is we just want to acknowledge that, yeah, a statement was made, but we really honestly don't believe it. We didn't see that much of the briefing. What was it? Well, I, I, um, that's the press office, and all of the, um, that is the press office, and uh, all of the people who okay. are writing yes. press guidance for the secretary, for me, come yes. into the room. That was, that was. I've got I, okay. 20 seconds, I, I'm late to the secretary. So I was, uh, I'm reviewing 
some of the information that comes in on press reports in the morning. I'm editing it. Now I'm going to go see the Secretary of State, uh, Mrs. Albright, and I'm going to review with her what I'm going to say on the major issue today. Okay. Yes. I know you're in a hurry. Just no, I'm going to walk down this corridor with the Secretary mm -hmm. in a minute if you want to film that. Can we? Yeah. Film that? In about five or ten minutes, I'll be there. Okay. I'll be okay. walking right down there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Burns, can you explain exactly how long the members of the budget add up? <laughs> room is empty now. Great. What was it? Uh, John Dinger, director of the press office, and that meeting was about? Uh, early this morning, we came in, my deputy who's here, and I came in and tried to um, anticipate what questions the press are likely to ask Nick at the briefing today. Uh, about 7.30 or 8, a, or 8 a.m., we asked the experts in the State Department these questions, they then this morning brought down back to us their answers. And so they come and usually 20, 25, 30 questions each day. And they come and we, um, we ask them questions about their answers. So if it's not clear, if they didn't answer the question, if we think there are more questions that journalists are likely to ask, uh, we, we grill them. We, we ask them more and more questions, just like we think will happen to Nick try to make sure that he has all the information he needs. So basically, Nick is just listening or trying to answer in the same time. Actually, actually we play the role of a journalist with these experts. The mm -hmm. experts come and sit right here. Mm -hmm. We act like we're journalists and say, no, wait a second. You said that there is going to be a, uh, a high-level meeting. Who's who from the American government? Who mm -hmm. from the foreign government? Or perhaps there's a crisis somewhere in the world, and it says, we're very concerned. Well, in the case of America, the next question always is, What's the United States going to do about it? And so we anticipate okay. those questions. Men, most of the experts are very, very good, and they already know and have provided that information. But we look closely, and if there's something we think they've left out, we ask them, and we make notes. And how many journalists you have here? We have probably a couple thousand, one to two thousand journalists who have permission to come to the briefing. Um, and we have a 40 or 50 regularly every day. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Ovo je za State Department uobičajena rutina. Novi državni sekretar Medlin Albright danas će držati press briefing, drugi od koje je stupila na dužnost. Sa njom naravno spokesman Nicholas Burns i njen saradnik od ranije James Rubin. Survival of children and the war against epidemic disease. Well, I'm sure that all those of you who have not yet done so will want to read the budget materials in their entirety. For years, we have been providing technical advice on how to achieve political and economic reform. Our focus now should be made available next year to pay our arrears to the United Nations and other international organizations. Our efforts here are a priority because the democratic transformation of this region is a vital and Thank you, Madam Secretary. I now want to turn the uh, program over to Ambassador Craig Johnstone. I want to know that Ambassador Dick Morningstar is also with us. Uh, Novinari koji rade u Sjedinim državama, posebno ovdje u Vašingtonu, moraju poštivati pravila o korištenju informacija do kojih dođu. U principu, ako nekoga intervjuišete, podrazumijeva se da je on the record. 
To znači da možete navesti ime i funkciju osobe koju intervjuišete, koristiti citate ili sažeti intervju. Drugi način komuniciranja je off the record. I to se vrlo često koristi, a može se čuti u vašintonskim visokim političkim krugovima. Političari hoće da vam kažu, a nisu vam kazali. Off the record je tek za vašu informaciju. Ne može se objavljivati. To je prešutan dogovor koji novinari koji drže do sobstvenog ugleda poštuju, iako imaju žarku želju da objave ono do čega su došli. Postoje još dva vrlo važna načina komuniciranja sa novinarima. Kada čujete da je nešto izjavio visoki predstavnik administracije ili neimenovani zvaničnik Pentagona ili zvaničnik koji nije želio biti imenovan ili anonimni zapadni zvaničnik, u novinarskom žargonu se to kaže da je informacija dobijena on background. To ne znači da nije istinita. Naprosto to znači da zvaničnik koji je brifirao novinare ili koji vam je to osobno saopštio nije želio biti imenovan. Jedan od načina je upravo ovaj, kada se završi zvanični press briefing u State Departmentu, novinari ostaju i žele pitati ili tražiti informaciju više od glasnogovornika Burnsa. U tom slučaju informacija je zaista on background, ukoliko želi uopće govoriti o nekoj temi. I konačno, posljednji način je on deep background. U tom slučaju ne smijete objaviti ništa, niti osobu s kojom ste razgovarali, niti instituciju u kojoj osoba radi. U tom slučaju novinari najčešće pribjegavaju konstrukciji vjeruje se da ili saznajemo. U principu to je igra riječi. Pravilo je da se mora poštovati vjerodostojnost materijala, ali da se izvor ne mora saopštiti. Nick, I was wondering uh, when we reporters are asking you a question, what kinds of things is in your mind? What you are thinking about when you are asking you? I'm trying to think of the best answer to the question. Everything, my best, the best arguments to put forward to convince the press that we can have a brilliant foreign policy. Uh, when you answer, <laughs> how do you mentally edit your answer? Edit the answer? Yeah. I try to think. Um, I, I try to think of maybe the one or two or three clearest points, most general points that I can say on most questions. Some questions are very specific, and therefore you answer them specifically. Do you know how often your bosses are following your briefings? Well, quite frequently, because they often give me feedback. The, the, um, the briefings are, trans are in television sets all over the State Department, so people can watch it, and I get a lot of feedback. Sometimes it's congratulations, sometimes it's criticism. Surely you have said uh, some, some, something uh, that you wished you didn't. What was the reaction, reaction of your bosses? You oh, say? I think they understand that sometimes, uh, you know, if, if you give a press conference every day, you're going to make, uh, from time to time, you say something you don't want to say, and they understand that. I, 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 you know, touch wood, I haven't had enough occasion when I've made a serious mistake, but I have made mistakes, and you try not to repeat them. But my, uh, Warren Christopher and Madeleine Albright have been very tolerant of my imperfections. If that They've been we call co uh -huh, okay. Yeah. So uh, finally, uh, at this point, this room is going to be in, in your mind for probably for a life. A long time. I'll close my eyes 30 years ago and I'll be able to see this room. Are you going to stay here for a while? You don't know. Uh, I'll I stay for a couple of more months, but then I expect that uh, Secretary Albright will appoint a new spokesman, which is entirely appropriate, and I'll, I'm going to go overseas, I hope. But this briefing room is the best training room for you, probably, to prepare for any single it's been issue. A, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Only fun? Uh, not always fun, but it's been a lot of fun in general. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Kao što vidite, dragi moji gledalci, opuštenom i na izgled posle spontanom istupu glasnogovornika predstoje ozbiljni treningzi i pripreme u kojima se ništa ne želi prepustiti slučaju. Svjesno se da milioni iščekuju šta će State Department kazati o nekom problemu, a svakom je njegov najvažniji i svakome je baš njegova muka najteža. Ipak, u sva nastojanja da se bude najobavješteniji, zna se desiti da novinari preteknu State Department i pitaju nešto što diplomatskim kanalima stiže tek kasnije. Neki od novinara gotovo da bolje poznaju vanjsku politiku od velikog broja novih službenika u State Departmentu, jer ti novinari prate State Department i kretanje u vanjskoj politici više od 30-ta godina i ispratili su mnogo predsjednika i državnih sekretara. Utoliko je teže stati ispred i misliti kako ih se može lako nadmudriti. For me, it's a real pleasure to introduce you to Jim Anderson. 
DPA, which is a German press agency. He's asking sometimes most difficult questions for Nicholas Burns, especially regarding Bosnia. Is that experience or you follow, followed Bosnia so closely? How come that you know that much about my country? Well, I follow everything, but uh, also there's sort of a historical accumulation of knowledge that you come covering the department. I've been covering this place like 25 years, and th there's crises, uh, every crisis has certain things in common. Bosnia is not totally unique, and particularly the U.S. policies are, are not unique. So I can just uh, go back to uh, some crises in, uh, in, in Germany, for example, or in, uh, even in Africa or in uh, Latin America, and you can see where U.S. policy tends to be consistent or inconsistent, and you just sort of try to aim at those points. So how would you characterize U.S. policy regarding Bosnia? Uh, confused. Uh, it started out uh, without any conviction or any commitment, without any real knowledge. And in time, partly because of the uh, coverage, the news coverage in the American newspapers and television, it gradually became apparent that there was great injustice being done, and it was uh, in many ways similar to the um, beginnings of, of full-scale wars. Then I think when uh, Holbrook came on board, I think that the whole process became energized. And when that happened, uh, that was the change in policy. In other words, the United States became involved, not only involved, but involved on the side of what they considered to be the victims, the Bosnians. Jim, do you believe that foreign policy, let's say U.S. foreign policy, depends on personalities? You said that Holbrook came and something happened. Is it because of Holbrook or because of uh, that Clinton decided to do something? Uh, it's not a simple answer. <coughs> the, his predecessor was um, thrown overboard, partly because he was not effective. Uh, in that sense, uh, the real decision was made at the level of the Secretary of State or the President who brought in someone they knew would be effective. Mm. They knew, and they knew that he had uh, certain ideas about what was right and what was wrong. So I suppose you could say the real decision was made when they picked Holbrook, but once in, Holbrook made the difference. So is, is it possible or is it fair to say that Madeleine Albright is going to, to, uh, to make a difference beca because Christopher was so cautious, at mm -hmm. least? Yeah, I think she will make a big difference. Sh I think she'll be much more independent. Um, I think uh, Christopher acted as an attorney. In other words, he was the president's lawyer and he did what the president said. I think Albright is an independent personality on her own, uh, in her own right, and she will do what she thinks is right. She'll tell the president, she'll take the orders, but you know, I think she'll be much more active in making suggestions and making policy. Being here day by day, uh, does that make you uh, uh, more, um, let's say, confident <coughs> that you can get right answer? Because sometimes it's so difficult to catch spokesman he's just trying to avoid answers my experience has been that if they don't want to answer and if they choose not to answer you could put them in a room and uh, stick pins into them and you still wouldn't get an answer they uh, the, the, in fact uh, there have been se several spokesmen have gotten into trouble by giving answers that weren't really authorized and uh, it's uh, it sounds like fun but in fact you, you shouldn't have the man standing at the podium making foreign policy. He's supposed to simply enunciate what the administration is doing. And once he starts making policy, he's really misleading us reporters and you, uh, 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 other countries, and uh, American citizens. If the best kind of a spokesman that I have uh, seen in my 25 years is the kind who knows and understands policy and is, um, doesn't necessarily agree with it, but is able to enunciate it and state it very clearly. That's a very rare combination. Thank you so much. Oh, Jim you. Anderson, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. Okay. Okay. Thank thank you. You. Bye -bye. Bye. My name is Uğur Akıncı. I'm Washington Bureau Chief of Turkish Daily News. And I've been uh, covering State Department regularly for the last three years. In general, I had a very positive experience, I can say. And uh, 
the you know the uh, s spokesperson i think in general uh, has done i work with three different spokespersons and they are generally willing to help I even at the, you know after hours but there is a you know established hierarchy here you can't help but notice which i guess is normal <laughs> you know first comes the you know, american journalists and the wire services <laughs> then you know, as you very well know every day the you know right to ask a question is you know accorded to the you know, american journalists first then we the, you know the foreign correspondents have the you know second priority but do you mm. do you um have you ever felt that uh foreign journalists are like almost like citizens of second rate it's something it's something like feeling that uh mm. first is american journalists and uh ap for instance wire services as you said well, I, I think everything is relative. Probably to answer this question, one must remember that in s a lot of countries, there are no daily briefings, is period. So the fact that you know there's a daily briefing at the you know, State Department is, I think, is a blessing. So you can come here and you know, ask your questions and get responses. And I think the guiding principle here is this is an institution formed by the taxpayers' money. So in their minds, you know, they think you know, they are uh, serving the you know, taxpayers first, and then. If you are not paying, you uh, can get. I mean, you know, that sort of philosophy seems to be in effect. Well, no, I have a question. Tom. Tom, Zita, Tom is. Zita. You can say the one and only. The nicest guy from Greece. Yes. Is Why Tom. You? What is your one? Elvis. Elvis. And from the other side, we have a journalist from Turkey. Yes, we are saying this. Are you doing it? <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> so my question for both of both of you is day by day you are sitting here shoulder by shoulder one from Greece the other from Turkey sometimes, sometimes it's even closer <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's but not it's publicly just shoulder by shoulder <laughs> okay. so do you understand when Nick is talking about uh, relationship between Greece and Turkey uh, your responsibility uh, after briefing, what you are going to tell your people in Turkey and Greece? I hope we do, uh, that we are responsible and that uh, we are mainly journalists and then citizens of Greece or Turkey. Now, as far as uh, sitting next to each other, we are, I hope, professionals and to a certain extent, we have friendly relations and sometimes one helps the other with, uh, you know, on a day by day um, aspects of our work. So I don't think there is any problem. I mean, our countries have a problem, but uh, let's hope that uh, by our presence here, we help to a certain point to uh, solve these problems. Whom are the, whom you're working with? Uh, Antenna TV, one of the private stations in, in Greece, and uh, a newspaper and uh, the official wire service of the country, Athens News Agency. Uh, how long uh, are you fo how long for how long are you following the uh, State Department here briefing? I for a year because I was in New York for uh, seven years, but now uh, for the last year. Actually, after the crisis uh, a year ago, we had a crisis in the Aegean between uh, Greece and Turkey, and uh, after that, I came to Washington. Have you ever compared your reports about same, let's say, press briefing? Have you ever compared what Yasmina sent or what? you said about Com U.S. policy? Uh, compare, no, but uh, she's quite professional and uh, her questions, uh, although sometimes, you know, uh, we don't uh, agree with the answers uh, she gets, but they help us to uh, get answers on our issues. So in that way, one could say that uh, not compare, but use her work uh, to, uh, you know, promote whatever we do. Tell us something about you, your name, last name. I know your name, actually, Yasmina. Uh, uh, we are seeing each, each other day by day here. Uh, you are from Turkey, and tell us something about your newspaper. Yeah, my name is Yasemin, as we say in Turkey. Yasemin Chongar. I work with the um, Turkish Daily Milliyet, which is at the moment the largest selling uh, national paper, and also for the private TV channel, Channel D. And I've been the Washington bureau mm -hmm. chief of Milliet for the last two years, more than two years now. But um, if I may, uh, may uh, notice, you are so tough sometimes. 
uh, with questions and Nick sometimes you gave him sometime a uh, hard time really asking I, I think I'm too soft but <laughs> anyway so but my question basically is have you ever felt that foreign journalists are like second grade because always it's like first American new big newspapers and American uh, agencies and after that maybe we can ask or is it, is it your impression? Not really, no, I wouldn't agree with that. I mean, of course, Americans have the priority. I mean, it's the wire services for first, big newspapers next, but no, not at these briefings. I mean, you are here almost all the time. He is here, and we all get to ask questions. And to be frank, sometimes some of our colleagues, maybe sometimes ourselves, ask questions, you know, which could be very yes. detailed, very much on the fringe, if you will. But uh, uh, Nick Burns, the spokesperson, is always very kind, very interested, tries to yeah, answer well. the questions. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I cannot really complain. I also had the br privilege to travel with um, the former Secretary Christopher on a, on a long trip to the Middle East and all the way to Saudi Arabia and then to France. And even on that trip, I was um, one of the two foreigners with an Israeli colleague. We were treated equally on everything. And you know our questions were answered by the secretary, by the spokesperson. You know we were one of the group, yeah. so that was a good feeling. And finally, uh, both of you are followed Bosnian crisis for a, at least two years. What was your impression about U.S. policy regarding Bosnia? Well, I uh, I think uh, it was a priority for the U.S., especially uh, after '94 with the U.S. taking a lead uh, after the Europeans seemed to be not able to uh, do whatever was necessary. And I think the U.S. Uh, played a major role in uh, bringing peace. Now one might uh, disagree with um, specific aspects of uh, Dayton and uh, the follow-up, I-4, whatever. But uh, I think that the U.S. policy in Bosnia was uh, quite a um, played the major role in uh, ending the war and uh, plays, uh, again, I guess, major role in keeping the peace. Now, what will follow, I don't know, because I see a lot of um, sentiment here in the U.S., as uh, the new Secretary of Defense, uh, Cohen, said, to uh, bring the troops back home. So, in that sense, uh, the future remains to be seen. Now, uh, Your country, tell me, is big allies of Serbs. We have historical ties with the Serbs, and uh, I think that Greece could, in a certain extent, it did play, but it could play even a more uh, role of uh, the Western country, uh, part of the European Union and NATO that has a closer relationship to uh, Belgrade, and in that sense, without taking the position of Serbia, could help in uh, promoting peace in the area, since we can talk to the Serbs better than the U.S. or somebody else, and I think to a certain extent they did help in that. Turkey, to the contrary, let's say, uh, helped a lot of Bosnians to survive, uh, Bosnian refugees precisely, but in the same time, uh, your country has own problems. What is your impression about U.S. policy regarding Bosnia? Um, I have been following that for quite a while before I came to Washington, too. I must say I was very frustrated with, with the U.S. policy before the Colbrook took over and uh, asked for a, for NATO intervention, and you know at that time many things changed. And uh, after that, I think Dayton was a success um, in its framework. But uh, the follow-up, I wouldn't say, is as successful as Dick, Dick Holbrook's efforts have been. Uh, we in Turkey and I. You know, as a as a journalist, I'm um, especially concerned about the situation of the war criminals. I don't think NATO is doing enough, I4 is doing enough, or United States is doing enough uh, to get them to the court in the Hague. And the, I, I think that should be one of the priorities because uh, you can never forget what happened, and families do not forget. And you have to show them that everyone is accountable for what they did during the war. If you don't show them as the international community, you cannot really ask them uh, to remain in peace and you know, to respect each other and to feel as equal citizens of a new entity. Thank you so much. Tell me. Well, yes, Anina. Thank, thank you. Thank you.
Za mnoge od vas ne treba puno govoriti o američkoj televizijskoj mreži ABC. Ovdje u State Departmentu njihov čovjek je David Ensor. To sada je napravio mnogo priča o Bosni i Hercegovini. Između ostalog, za njih je najzanimljivija, jedna od najzanimljivijih tema je pitanje ratnih zločinaca. Za Davida dva pitanja. Generally speaking, do you feel that situation is in Bosnia is getting a fair shake in the day to day briefing in the State Department? Or do you think that there is any changes since Dayton Agreement is visible in Bosnia? I haven't been to Bosnia since January, uh, just over a year ago. And so I'm not entirely up to date on what's happening on the ground. Uh, it gets a lot of attention, as you know, from being here in the briefing room. And there's some quite tough questions sometimes, particularly on the war criminals issue, which a lot of Americans feel is a crucial one. Uh, if there is to be reconciliation at some point between uh, Serbs and uh, Muslims and Croats, there will have to be uh, uh, trials of those who are guilty of war crimes. We feel very strongly about that. We ask about that a lot here. You are so persistent. And secondly, do you think that State Department is ever going to change its song Day by day, they are telling us uh, that it is up to the parties in Bosnia. And you weren't satisfied. Day by day, you are asking again and again. So do you feel that there is some changes in U.S. policy toward war crimes tribunal and war criminals? Well, you, you've heard, as I have, uh, in the last few weeks, they've been hinting that they're looking at other ways to go after war criminals, uh, that they're uh, not going to rely just on the parties there. They haven't really said what they're going to do, but there's been vague talk of some kind of an international police force or other sorts of pressure that might be brought on the parties. They seem to realize that unless something is done in this area, when the uh, NATO troops leave Bosnia, it, the perception will be that they didn't really finish their job. Even though they are saying that the NATO forces are not going to arrest war criminals, still, it's unfinished business if uh, the more uh, well-known war criminals are walking around, uh, uh, in effect, uh, uh, cocking their noses, uh, uh, making fun of the international community. Finally, David, generally speaking, are you optimistic about Bosnia's future? You know, Americans uh, tend to be a rather optimistic nation. Uh, and uh, most Americans, I guess, think that Bosnia, the problem has been solved, or it's on, a way on the way to a solution. Um, I've spent enough time, though, in Europe and enough time in the former Yugoslavia that perhaps I'm not so optimistic as most Americans are. I see a lot of problems down the road for your country. Uh, meanwhile, you've been in Russia, you've been in Poland, Italy. Just explain to us for the end a little bit short ID, David Ensor. I've, I've spent most of my career as a journalist overseas. Uh, I was based in Poland during the uh, Solidarity era, martial law and all the rest of it, the, the sort of fall of communism in that country. I moved to Italy and covered the Pope and terrorism in the Middle East and so forth for several years. And more recently, I spent three and a half years in Moscow covering both coup attempts, the war in Chechnya, and so forth. I've seen a lot of bloodshed and, and a lot of changes in this, in this world. I, I li I'd like to think I'm a correspondent who covers the world. I'm Sid Ballman, a diplomatic correspondent for United Press International. I've been in this post for a little over five years, and uh, my tenure here includes the beginning of the Balkan War, uh, the Dayton peace negotiations, which I covered extensively uh, from Dayton and the world's capitals until now. Uh, Sid, in your time here in the State Department, what Bosnian issue was the trickiest for you personally? Well, I think the negotiations themselves were the trickiest uh, because by definition they were private. And the Clinton, uh, the Christopher State Department was quite, quite secretive about the way they conducted them. So we were really um, reliant, at least for the on the record comments from the spokesman, Nicholas Burns. Uh, and that does pose some difficulties with presenting the real picture to, to the world. Uh, most of the time, Sid, you have really tough questions for Nicholas Burns. 
with regard to Bosnia, generally speaking, how close is the State Department's answer to the reality of the situation? Well, spokesmen are going to always try to put the best face on it, on anything. We like to call it spin here in Washington. Uh, try to get the reporters spinning around and looking the, in the correct direction. Um, Nick is uh, Nick Burns is, is an honest person. Um, he, given the confines of what he has to work with, he usually presents the best um, the best version of reality that that they can present. But it's not always the exact truth, which is why it's important to to talk to people besides the spokesman, uh, diplomats from other countries, uh, from Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia. I might add the Bosnian uh, diplomats were among the most helpful to me personally during the, the whole Dayton peace process. And so you just have to keep that in mind when you're dealing with, with spokesmen anywhere, not just here at the State Department. I'm Carol Giacomo, and I'm a diplomatic correspondent for Reuters. I've been doing this job for 10 years at the State Department. Um, covering secretaries of state since George Schultz, and including uh, James Baker, Larry Eagleburger, Warren Christopher, and now Madeleine Albright. Um, w our day is usually um, pretty hectic. We start around 9 o'clock, but it can start earlier, depending on who's in town and what's going on. And uh, we're usually here till about 7 o'clock at night. And when we're on the road with the Secretary of State, the days can last 18 or 20 hours. Usually, Carol, you are asking so difficult questions, and some people think that you are uh, uh, even more informed than some people who are uh, advisors or something like that for um, security issues. Uh, regarding Bosnia, you are pretty aware of what's going on down there. So, what is your opinion about co correlation in between State Department foreign policy? and Bosnian issue. You've been in Dayton, you know right. how they uh, made this uh, this agreement. So what is your opinion following State Department's briefing, briefing what's going on down there in Bosnia? I mean, the, the way the briefing has handled Bosnia has changed over time. I mean, in the beginning when the war began and there were ter increasing stories about terrible atrocities in Bosnia, the briefings were very contentious. People asked very difficult questions of the, sp of the spokesman, and would it was a very, very feisty um, exchange because uh, we kept pummeling the spokesman for answers to questions which they often didn't answer or, um, or gave very, um, you know, diplomatic, non-responsive answers to. Um, you know, in, in some ways, I think reporters felt that they, I mean, that was a period when um, they were really engaged in their job and they thought they could really make a difference. And, um, and, and I think there were some times when the press corps felt they could make a difference because they forced the U.S. government to address issues that were important and to look at what was happening on the ground in Bosnia and to, um, and to pay more attention to what was happening. And sometimes I know the press corps felt um, that they, you know, they would throw up their hands because um, we felt that we weren't getting the answers that were appropriate and, uh, and were really having little effect on policy. Um, today, obviously, it's different. I mean, um, the, the briefings are less consumed with Bosnia, um, and they tend to be less contentious. What thoughts cross your mind in moments when you feel that this spokesman is dodging you? Is dodging me? <laughs> um, well, I mean, that's... Look, he has a job to do. He has to represent U.S. policy, and he... Uh, I mean, sometimes they only want to say so much in response to an answer. Um, sometimes they want to answer a question in a very specific way and, and go no further. And it's, it's our job to try to get as much out of them as we can, to get as truthful an answer as we can, to get as much understanding as we can about U.S. policy and where it's going. So 
um, you get frustrated sometimes, but you can't be, uh, you know, intimidated by that. Does it mean basically that sometimes it's even uh, it's easier being a journalist than being a spokesman? I think sometimes it is easier being a journalist. Um, it's easier to ask the question than to stand up there in, in public and really be held accountable for, your, for every word that you speak. Um, the, the State Department spokesman's image and his words go all over the world, and if you, it's very easy to, to trip up. Policy is often very nuanced, and if you make a mistake, uh, there can be you know, consequences to that. Really? Okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah. Okay, well, I'll I'm Steve Hurst, and I am the State Department correspondent for CNN. Before coming to the State Department, I had worked in Russia uh, for the Associated Press, NBC, and CNN for about 12 years. Steve, more than anybody else, you have had a rare chance to ask Secretary Christopher about Bosnia before he left office. Uh, am I correct in assuming that you didn't get the answers you were looking for? Well, uh, I suppose I didn't get the answer that I thought probably uh, reflected what in fact happened. Um, I asked the Secretary of State uh, why he felt it took so long for the United States and the rest of the world community to actually take some action in Bosnia. And uh, his answer was more or less that uh, that wasn't a terribly relevant question. The question that was relevant was what had happened once uh, the United States and the NATO allies took action. Uh, your company, CNN, has become indispensable for U.S. foreign policy. Is it fair to say that CNN has reached a symbiotic level with the United States government? CNN needs news to broadcast and the government needs a messenger. No, I, w I wouldn't say that at all. Um, in fact, because uh, CNN is an international broadcasting company, and I think that maybe it is seen as something that uh, carries the United States government message, but that is only part of our work. We carry uh, the messages of governments from all over the world and people from all over the world just simply in the course of covering the news. It just so happens that what I do is cover the uh, diplomatic events inside the United States. and. Uh, Obviously, when I report something that the United States government says uh, in context, um, it might be seen that way, but that's not, in fact, what we're doing. You ask a lot of questions about Bosnia, and you're pretty aware of what's going on in my country. When you ask the State Department spokesman a question, what kind of thoughts running through your mind? Through my mind? Oh, my. Uh, I think uh, primarily I th the, the thoughts that run through one's mind is tr to try to get um, a good explanation of exactly what uh, the United States government uh, is planning to do and what kind of policy it is that uh, the United States is following because so often I think we saw in Bosnia uh, um, an attempt to explain what the United States and, and, Euro and its European allies were doing uh, by way of policy but in fact the uh, what was said and what was done didn't always really match up. What is your impression that the second Clinton administration is going to be better or more uh, uh, frontier in Bosnia than before? Well, I think now that um, there are so many U.S. troops involved in Bosnia, and I don't think that there's any um, indication that they're going to be leaving anytime soon, uh, the United States has to stay very involved just because it's there. Now, I think the big question on everyone's mind is just how active those those forces, which are very powerful, will be. I mean, how much will they get involved, for example, in in trying to rebuild the country, uh, to to help in the recreation of of civic structures, and um, will they, in fact, start looking for uh, war criminals uh, and really be active in that? Uh, so far, no. Uh, I would suggest, and this is a personal opinion, not that of CNNs, that uh, they should be very active in that regard. Iako moj briefing traje tek dijelić vremena u odnosu na to koliko se ovdje uistinu potroši na pripremu, samu pres konferenciju i sastanke koji slijede nakon toga i pojedinačne intervjue, nadam se da sam uspjela da vam približim kako nastaje State Department saopštava, State Department osuđuje,
Mercedes Pakistan pozdravlja. To ste nebrojeno puta čuli na radio ili televiziji, pročitali u novinama kao stav američke administracije. Na kraju željela bih kazati da smo, zahvaljujući Burnsu i njegovim ljubaznim saradnicima, uspjeli ipak zaviriti na mjesta koja većina svijeta nikada nije vidjela. Ali moj briefing ne bi bio kompletan ako vas ne podsjetim da smo vidjeli tek Djelić. Ono što se dešava iza scene, ono što je priprema za formalno saopštavanje stava, mnogo je komplikovaniji mehanizam, star više od dva stoljeća. Kako je saopštio visoki američki zvaničnik koji nije želio biti imenovan, on deep background vidjeli smo vrh ledenog brijega. Off the record meni je bilo izuzetno zanimljivo. On the record do narednog gledanja topo vas pozdravljam iz State Departmenta. Briefing je završen. Thank you.